ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech the best of speech the best of words is the speech and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kull muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Abu Hurairah narrates a hadith from the Prophet Wasallam. That was one of those ones that was concise, but yet gave a complete picture of how we are to live our lives to be successful. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man ya'khud anni ha'ulai kalimat, fa ya'amalu bihinna, aw yu'allimu man ya'amalu bihinna. Fa qala Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, fa qultu ana ya Rasulullah, fa akhada biyad, فأخذ بيدي فعد خمسا وقال اتق المحارم تكن أعبد الناس وأرضى بما قسم الله لك تكن أغنى الناس وأحسن إلى ذلك تكن مؤمنا وأحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكن مسلما ولا تكثر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب this hadith, which is graded as Hassan by Shaykh al-Albani in Sahih al-Jamah, Prophet Mu- it was narrated that the Prophet Muhammad he said, who will learn from me five words or five phrases and will act upon them? And if they can't act upon them, who can at least teach them to other people? Abu Huraira he said, I will. So give me that av- advice so that I could act upon it. Or if I can't, I will at least teach it. So he said, so the Prophet ﷺ took a hold of my hand and he started to count them. He said, keep away from the prohibited matters. And you will be the best of worshippers. He said, be content with what Allah has given you. And this is a, a theme we have to keep reminding ourselves with, especially in this material world. Be content with what Allah has given you, you'll be the richest of people. Be good to your neighbor, neighbor you will be a true believer. Love for the other people what you love for yourself, and you will be a good or a perfect Muslim. And do not laugh too much, because excessive laughter, it deadens the heart. So this is a hadith that we should reflect upon, of those five points, so that we may be of those who implement it, or at the very least we call others to it, because this is the path to success. He said, he said, keep away from the prohibited things, the haram things, and you'll be the best of worshippers. Everything 
والسرقة والزنا والنميمة والكذب والخيانة وقول الزور وأكل الربا وحقوق الوالدين وقطع الرحم وشرب الخمر والسحر وغيرها. Keep away from the prohibited things and you'll be the best of worshippers. And those prohibited things, these are the major ones. Shirk, associating partners with Allah, killing others or killing oneself, suicide, stealing, zina, backbiting and slander, lying, being treacherous, breaking your oaths, right? That you give falsely, false witness and false speech, consuming riba. And this is a very big problem here in the, the American system, even now spreading to the Muslim lands, about interest and usury. This is from the major, major sins. Disobedience to the parents, cutting off the relations of the womb, intoxicants, drugs, alcohol, they all fall under khamar, black magic and other than that. وَيَلْزِمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْعَبْدُ عَالِمًا بِالْوَاجِبِ لِيَقُومُ بِهِ وَعَارِفًا بِكُلِّ مُحَرَّمٍ يَجْتَنِبُهِ وَمِنْ هُنَا قَالَ طَلَبُ الْعِنْ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ So here, it is a must, it is necessary that everybody knows the good things so that they may do them and knows the haram and the forbidden so they may stay away from them. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, طَلَبُ الْعِنْ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ That the seeking of knowledge is a faridah. It is an obligation upon every Muslim male and female. So it is clear that honoring the sacred things of Allah is good for the servants. Because Allah, He said, ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمُ حَرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ Because Allah said what means that has been commanded and whoever honors the sacred ordinances of Allah, it is best for him in the sight of his Lord. That you honor those hudud, that you don't transgress those limits, that you stay away from those forbidden things, because they are indeed destructive. Destructive to you, and then that destructiveness can spread to those who associate with you or whom you associate with. Thawban, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, لعلمنا أقواما من أمتي يأتون يوم القيامة بحسنات أمثال جبال التهامة بيضا فيجعلها فيجعله الله عز وجل هباء منثورا قال ثوبان يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سفهم لنا جلهم لنا أن لا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم ثوبان he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said I certainly know people from my ummah who will come on the day of resurrection with good deeds, the likes of the mountain of Tihama. Large, a large mountain. They will come with many good deeds. Their prayers, their fasting, <coughs> their charity, the goodness to their parents and their neighbors, whatever, all these good deeds. They will come, but Allah will make them scattered like dust. Thawban, he said, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu sift hum lana. Describe them to us. Jannihim lana. Tell us more about them so that we will not become of them unknowingly. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمَا إِنَّهُمْ إِخْوَانُكُمْ مِنْ جِلْدَتِكُمْ وَيَأْخَذُونَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ كَمَا تَأْخَذُونَ وَلَكِنَّهُمْ أَقْوَامٌ إِذَا خَلُوا بِمَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَهَكُوهَا رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث حسن. The Prophet ﷺ, he then described this proof that will come on the day of resurrection with great deeds, great amount of good deeds, but they're going to be scattered like this. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get no benefit from them. Right? He said, they are your brothers. They're from your race, worshipping at night as you do. So these were even the ones who would get up for tahajjud. But they will be people when they are alone, when they check out that no one can see them, so they look good to the people, but they're not taking to regard the fact that Allah sees them and hears them and knows what they're doing. When they're alone, they transgress the limits of Allah. They transgress the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was the first advice. Stay away from the muharramat, from the things that Allah has made forbidden to us. To kun aghna nas you'll be aghna. To be a'bad nas you will be the best of worshippers. وَأَرْضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَكُنْ أَغْنَ النَّاسِ And be content with what Allah has given you, and you will be the richest of people. And we'll continue to drive this point and remind ourselves, me first for myself, and you and your families, remind one another of this point. Because that is a material world. 
Everything we strive for is material. It has to be tangible. It has to be touched. It has to be owned. Even though a Jannah that was promised to us that will be better than what the eyes have seen, what the ears have heard, what can't even occur to our heart, is not tangible to us. So therefore, we act like it's not there for us to earn. مَعْنَاهُ أَقْنَعْ بِمَا عَطَاقَ اللَّهِ وَجَعَلَهُ حَقَّكَ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ تَكُنْ أَغْنَى النَّاسِ So be content with what Allah has given you. And realize that what He's given you a provision is what your Lord created for you to have a provision. And you will be the richest of people. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنِ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ Rawah Muslim. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Richness does not lie in the abundance of, world, abundance of worldly goods. You're not rich if you own a lot of stores. You're not rich if you own a lot of land. You're not rich if you own a lot of cars. You're not rich if you have large numbers in your bank account or wherever it may be. You're not rich if you own a lot of gold. You may be rich in this life, but to Allah, true richness is the richness of the soul, the richness of the heart, the richness of oneself. This is what matters to Allah. The one who's really rich is the one, he fears Allah, he has taqwa. In the sight of Allah, this is the best one. In the akramakum and Allahi atqaqum, that the one who is best in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. This is the one who is rich. And those ones who look like they have big bank accounts, like they're rolling in the dough, they're straight up broke. They just don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, Wala tumudanna aynaika ila ma matta'na bihi azwajan minhum zahrat al hayat al dunya yinaftanuhum fihi wa rizqu rabbika khayrun wa abqa. Allah said, What means? And strain not your eyes, longing for the things that were given as of enjoyment to the various groups amongst them. And this is just what we end up doing. Look at this kuffar. They're kuffar. Look at what they have. Look at the ease in their life. Look at the good wealth they have. Look at the money they have. And we think this is good for us if it was for us. They think this is comfort. But dunya sijil mu'min wa jannatul kafir. But the Prophet said this dunya is a prison for the believer. It's jannah for the disbeliever. Allah commanded us, do not long, do not strive. Even the other Muslims that we may know from our family members or our friends who seem to not do this in the way of Allah, not pray, not come to the masjid. And you may see them having wealth and being given good health and having large families and being so comfortable. Don't worry. Do not long for what they have. Be content with what Allah gave you. He said, do not strain your eyes longing for what they have, the splendor of the life of this world that we may test them thereby. It's a test for them. It's just a test. But the provision, the good reward in the hereafter of your Lord is better. And it is more lasting. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ مَنْ هُوَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْكَ مَالًا وَأَوْلَادًا فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّ هُنَاكَ مَنْ أَنْتَ أَكْثَرَ مِنْهُ مَالًا وَوَلَدًا فَانْظُرْ إِلَى مَنْ أَنْتَ فَوْقَهُ وَلَا تَنْظِرْ إِلَى مَنْ هُوَ فَوْقَهُ So when you are in this state and you're looking at what the people have and you're looking at those who may have more than you in terms of wealth and children, do not do that. Look at those who are above them. And look at those who are below you. So when you see someone that you're starting to admire how what they have, what they've been given, look at those who are above them even. And look at those who are below you. So you don't belittle them the, the favors of Allah as the Prophet said, Bukhari Muslim, they related the hadith from Abu Huraira. That the Prophet ﷺ said, when you look, when you compare yourself to the ones, to other people in terms of wealth, in terms of health, in terms of family size, whatever it may be, look at those who are below you. Do not look at those who are above you. Look at those who have less. Look at those who don't have what you don't have, what you have. Do not look at those who are above you in terms of wealth and status and family and the likes of this. Because when you do so, you're belittling the favors of Allah. You're belittling the favors and the blessings of Allah. One of the Salaf Masruq, rahimahullah, he said, there is nothing in the worldly life that I grieve for more except for the sajda, for the sake of Allah, for the prostration, for the sake of Allah. This is true wealth. The one who really knows this, says this, 
feels this, believes this, this person is the real wealthy one. Take away everything I have. Don't take away me doing sajda. Don't take away me being able to worship my Creator, to put my face, my forehead and my nose, my palms, my knees, my toes on the ground, to worship Allah above the seven heavens, above His arsh, separate from His creation. This is true wealth. وَأَرْضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكْ تَكُنْ أَغْنَ النَّاسِ Be content with what Allah gave you, you'll be the richest of, richest of people. وَأَحْسَنْ إِلَى جَارِكَ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا Be good to your neighbor and you'll be a true believer. Allah, He commanded us with this. He commanded us with being good to the neighbors. When He said, وَاعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِذِ وَالْجَارِذِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah says what means worship Allah and do not join partners with Him in worship and then do good to your parents, be good to them and honor them, be good to your kinsfolk, keep the family ties, be good to the orphans, Who's, uh, who have no fathers, be good to the masakeen, to the poor ones, be good to the neighbor, the neighbor that may be related to you, and the neighbor who is not related to you, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, the one traveling who you meet, and those slaves whom your right hands possess. Indeed, Allah does not love those who are self-deluding and boastful. Allah, He commanded this. Right after commanding to not commit shirk and to be good to your parents, that you uphold the ties of the neighbors. Abu Hurairah narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu he said, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min. Three times he said, I swear by Allah, he is not a believer. I swear by Allah, he is not a believer. <coughs> I swear by Allah, he is not a believer. Qila man ya Rasulullah. They said, he said, Abu Hurairah, he said to him, Who, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alladhi la ya'manu jarahu biwa'iqi. متفق عليه وفي رواية مسلم لا يدخل الجنة من لا يأمن جاره بواقعه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the authentic hadith, swearing after it by Allah, by Allah, by Allah three times he is not a believer. When he was asked who is it, O Messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the one whose neighbor does not feel safe from his evil. And sometimes the neighbor may do something to you, and it's always revenge. It's always a revenge will say, and I hear it, I, I get it all the time. Someone getting upset with their neighbor and doing some harm back to them. This hadith was in Bukhari and Muslim, by the way. Guard your own deen. Be the better neighbor. Try to find ways to dispel those situations because you want to be the one who honors his neighbor. Another narration we have in Sahih Muslim, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he will not enter Jannah whose neighbor is not secure from his wrongful conduct. So is really getting back at your neighbor in this dunya worth you sacrificing being in Jannah? An Aisha radiallahu anha, Umm al Mu'mineen, from Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma zala yusini Jibreel bil jari, hatta dhanantu annahu sayyuarrithuhu. Rawahu Bukhari. Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jibreel, the angel Jibreel, the angel of revelation, he continued to recommend me to be good and kind and generous with my neighbors and to be polite with them so much that I thought he was going to give them or make them part of the inheritance. That he would make them be the receivers of the inheritance upon my death. And Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه أو قال لجاره ما يحب لنفسه. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, none of you truly believes till he loves for his brother. And in one narration, it says for his neighbor what he loves for himself. So question, do you love for your brother what you love for yourself? Do you love for your neighbor what you love for yourself? You like a clean yard, what about their yard? You would like nothing in your driveway, what about your neighbor's driveway? And we have these habits where we're in a rush, or we're going to a party, or we're going to a get-together at our neighbor's house. And we block their driveways. And we have the audacity to get mad when they go all to get it towed. And the masjid, we have neighbors, the salaf, they used to consider the neighbors 40 homes away, not just the one on your right, your left behind you and in front of you. 
These were the neighbors. Harming your neighbor in any way. What if they needed to get out for work? What if they needed to get out for an emergency? Same goes for the neighbors here. The church is a neighbor. The houses around the academy parking lot are a neighbor. The houses around our masjid are a neighbor. Some 40 houses away. وَأَحْسَنْ إِلَىٰ جَارِكَ Be good and kind to your neighbor. تَقُلْ مُؤْمِنًا You'll be a believer. أَقُولُ قَلِ هَذَا سَقْرَ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ أَبَى اللَّهَ يَخْلَّهُمْ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, who will take from me five words and implement them or at least teach them to others? So Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه said, I will do that. So he said, keep away from the haram, the prohibited things, you'll be the best of worshippers. Stay away from the haram, you'll be the best of worshippers. Be content with what Allah gave you. Whatever you have, even if the people think it's little, even if the people look down upon you, even if the people think you're poor, be content with what Allah gave you, you're the richest of people. Be good to your neighbor, and you'll be a complete believer. And then he said, And love for the people, what you love for yourself, and you will be a... You will be a complete Muslim. You will be a good Muslim. If you love for the people what you love for yourself. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحب أن يزحزح عن النار ويدخل الجنة فلتدركه منيته وهو مؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر وليأتي إلى الناس الذي يحب أن يؤتى إليه رواه مسلم. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم يسلم أثنتك حديث in صحيح مسلم. He who desires to be saved from the fire of Jahannam and to enter into Jannah, to enter into paradise, should die in a state of complete belief in Allah and the last day and should do unto others what he wishes to have done unto him. So if you want good for yourself, you should want good for others. If you don't want harm for yourself, you should not want harm for others. This is a general principle, my brothers and sisters in Islam, part of our deen, part of our Islam, to have complete belief, to have complete iman, that you love for your brother what you love for yourself, that you love for your neighbor what you love for yourself, that you love for the people what you love for yourself. We should love that people have Islam as their deen. And we should ask Allah to guide the people rather than to harm them or to curse them. So to reach this level, you've got to release from your heart cheating. You've got to release from your heart competition. You've got to release from your heart being jealous. You've got to release from your heart being proud and arrogant. You've got to release from your heart being greedy. You've got to release from your heart having envy. Like wanting what someone has so much that you actually want Allah to take it away from them. Unfortunately, these things which are so warned about in Islam have become the overall highlights of the Muslim heart. And this is something that I warn myself and you about. Because they will destroy your heart. And your heart is what matters on the day of resurrection. Look into the lives of the companions, how many times they were insulted. And then their companion would come to them, Hey man, insult me back so I can feel better. Right? Insult me back so I can feel better. And they wouldn't do it. Look how they forgave, how they looked out for one another, how they helped one another. To not commit sin, to not spread fitna, to not spread doubt, to not spread bad feelings, to not spread animosity. We see an extraordinary example of this in the teaching, uh, putting this teaching into practice from the Salaf, the righteous predecessors of our Ummah, Ibrahim al Nafai, Rahimahullah. He was A'wal al Ain, he was blind in one eye, and his student, Sulaiman ibn Mihran, was al A'mash, A'mash. He was blurry-eyed. He had a weak vision. Ibn al-Jawzi, he related a story about them on their way to go out to the masjid in Kufa. So Ibrahim al-Nafi'i, rahimahullah, he said to his student, Sulaiman, he said to him, Hey man, you take one way, I'm going to take another way to get to the masjid and we'll just meet up there. Sulaiman, he asked him why. 
He said, because I fear if we go together, the people might mock us, they might laugh at us, they might say, Al-A'wa, the blind one is leading Al-A'ma, she's leading the one who's blurry-eyed, and people might joke about us and backbite us. So Suleiman, he said to him, Oh, Abu Imran, what is wrong with that then? They're the sinners, we'll get the reward, they'll be backbiting us. Ibrahim al nakhiri rahimahullah, he said, Subhanallah, bal naslam wa yaslamun. He said, Subhanallah, that we be safe from their backbiting, and they be safe of sin is better than if we're rewarded and they're punished. Do you have that love for your brothers and sisters in Islam? Or is it all about me being better and them being less than me? Me having the upper hand and them being the lower hand. Look at how they looked out to not cause sin amongst one another, to not cause feelings of remorse and animosity, to not cause feelings of, of, of jealousy or envy or, or envy or hatred. Love for the people what you love for yourself, and you will be a good, complete Muslim. And the last point that was mentioned in that advice for you to implement, and if you can't, at least teach it to the people. And do not in laugh too much, in excessive laughter, because it deadens the heart. There are times for laughter. It is not something that is prohibited. There are times when you see in the sunnah of the anbiya, the prophets laughing, the prophet laughing so loud that in the hadith it mentions you could see his molar teeth. This is how much he laughed. There were some who were so dear to him from the sahaba, some who were at the level of committing major sins, but he knew they loved Allah and his messenger. Some of them were known to be the ones who would make the prophet laugh. So this isn't forbidden, nor is this haram. But we should caution ourselves with this being excessive. Because nowadays, what's the common theme? We just want to laugh. We just want to have entertainment. This phone in our hands, entertainment. The TV, entertainment. Social media, entertainment. Going out, entertainment. Forget talking, forget looking out the window, admiring what subhanAllah Allah has created so you can glorify Him in the white. No, it's all about entertainment. I want to laugh, I want to laugh, fine, laugh. As long as it's halal, and what is halal? But at the same time, where's your balance? Where's your balance? Because as Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, the head of the matter is Islam, that like the head of the bird, its wings are hope and fear, hope for Allah's mercy, fear of His punishment. If they're not balanced, the bird cannot fly. Your Islam has issues. That head, afwan, was muhabbatillah, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to have balance. Yes, you can laugh. But yes, you should look at your sins and weep over your sins and ask Allah to forgive you for your sins. And this balance should be there. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, لا تحرقن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أفاق بوجه طلق. The Prophet وسلم, he said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, do not consider any act of goodness as insignificant even if it is meeting your brother with a cheerful face. Or giving him something to smile or laugh about. But again, this shouldn't be everything. Where everything is just about excessive laughter. Because it will deaden the heart. So keep in mind this hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha. Where she mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Ummati Muhammad, Wallahi. Wallahi, law ta'lamuna ma a'lam. Labakitum kathira. Walabakitum qalila. Keep in mind this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said, O Messenger, O, o followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, by Allah, I swear that if you knew what I knew, you would be crying a lot, you would be weeping a lot, and you would only laugh a little. But we don't want to focus on those warnings, even though we're reminded about death every day. We don't want to focus on those things because it takes away from the joy of your dunya. Well, if that's what you're seeking, go for it. As the Prophet said, if you got no shame, do as you wish. If I'm mashit, do whatever you want. But if we want to have shame, if we want to have modesty, if we want to have some hayat, if we want to thank Allah for what He's blessed us with, then balance your, your, this aspect. Do not get into excessive laughter and make that a goal of everything because it will deaden the hearts. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah allow us to take these five, implement them, and at the very least, if we cannot, at least teach them. So we can be on that path to success, earning the pleasure of Allah and His Rahmah. And make, may Allah make us from the inhabitants 
of his Jannah. Allahumma khil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat, al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat, al-Ahyaa'in wa al-Amwat, inna ka'a tasmi'a al-Qayyib wa al-Mujib al-Da'wat, ya muqallib al-Qulub, thabit quluban ala deenik, subhana rabbiki rabbil izzati yamma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.